Hello, everyone. Welcome to Research Talks, Qualitative Scholar Conversations. We're happy today to have with us Johnny Saldana. Johnny has been a scholar with us at Research Talks now for quite a long time. We are honored and proud to have him as part of our team, and all of us are looking forward to joining today in a conversation with him. In addition to Johnny and myself, I'm Ray Mayetta, president of Research Talk. We have Paul Mijas, who is here representing not only himself as a Research Talk consultant, but also as uh, the, uh, would you Paul, your title at Odom, I'll let you introduce yourself as an Odom representative. Sure, I'm the uh, the assistant director of qualitative research at the Odom Institute for Research and Social Social Science at UNC Chapel Hill. Thanks, Ray. Thank you, Paul. And Jeff, if you want to introduce yourself, hi, I'm Jeff Petruzzelli with Research Talk. I'm a qualitative research specialist here. All right. So today, what we'll do in our conversation is talk to Johnny about three courses he's offering at our qualitative research summer intensive. The first course is Fundamentals of Qualitative Research, and that will be offered Monday and Tuesday, July 22nd and 23rd. And then on August, uh, Wednesday and Thursday, July 31st and August 1st, Johnny will be offering Coding and Analyzing Qualitative Data. And the final course for the summer intensive Johnny will offer is a topic that Johnny has a book hot off the presses, right, Johnny? Uh, available for all of you to start enjoying, joining, uh, enjoying, titled Developing Theory Through Qualitative Inquiry. That's a one-day course on Friday, August 2nd. So we'll begin, actually, Johnny, I want to give you a chance to tell us more about you, if you can introduce yourself for folks, and included in that introduction, it would be great if you tell us a little bit about your evolution as a qualitative researcher. Oh, certainly. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm so appreciative of the research talk staff for uh, letting me be part of this wonderful program. I'm Professor Emeritus from Arizona State University in Tempe, and I focused primarily on theater education, uh, teacher preparation, grades K-12, in the School of Film, Theater, and Dance in the Herberger Institute for Design and the Arts. My work as a qualitative researcher actually began as a quantitative one because in the 1980s, when I joined the Arizona State University, University uh, department. My research mentor was wanting to conduct a longitudinal study on the way that young people responded to theater and the way they did improvised drama in the classroom. Now, at that time, my field was just getting uh, into qualitative research, but we were still in the quantitative paradigm. And so my primary function was to conduct a lot of interviews, but transform all of those interviews with young people into numeric representation and statistics. Well, by the time our longitudinal study was over seven years later, my field was now starting to turn into the qualitative paradigm. And so I was uh, kind of behind the times when it got to publishing our final reports. And everybody was kind of skeptical about all of my numbers. And during my sabbaticals, what I like to do is I like to take courses at the university for my own professional development. And because I was behind on qualitative inquiry, I really didn't have any kind of training in it. I decided to enroll in several courses. My first two were Tom Barone and Mary Lee Smith, who were very notable figures in the field of educational qualitative research. It was from them that I began my journey as a qualitative researcher. And then later on, my courses in communication with Sarah J. Tracy, who is also a research talk scholar, and Sarah Amira de la Garza also acquainted me with other qualitative inquiry methods um, and data analysis. So my journey as a qualitative researcher I actually began with taking courses from some very well-known people in the field, and I'm very grateful for their mentorship. Uh, and then uh, my work in qualitative inquiry began to be noticed at conferences and at workshops. And so I actually blended my background in theater with qualitative inquiry by approaching it, uh, not necessarily from a dramaturgical perspective, but I was bringing so much of what I learned about theater into 
my teaching of qualitative inquiry because uh, I was taught how to think symbolically, metaphorically, and conceptually. And those are the three basic skills that I try to teach in my qualitative inquiry workshops. I love the transferability and those three concepts are just so powerful, Johnny, it's great. Oh, and your experience learning from wonderful Sarahs and powerful qualitative people, it's great. Oh, um, when we think about your offerings for the summer, um, the first course that you'll be teaching is Fundamentals of Qualitative Research. And we're hoping you could just tell us a little bit about the origins of that course and include it in that if you want to reference, um, you have a book by that same title, uh, feel free. The course originally began simple enough as Introduction to Qualitative Research. And, and as that course evolved, it uh, I had also written a book for Oxford University Press called Fundamentals of Qualitative Research. It was a slim paperback, which was an overview. And I used that and also a future textbook that I co-wrote with Matt Omasta called Qualitative Research, Analyzing Life. Those two books became kind of the template or the curriculum for fundamentals of qualitative research because I acknowledged that I was going to have people from a variety of different backgrounds, ranging from sociology to healthcare to education. I had to find a way of teaching the course that would appeal to people from various disciplines. And so I keep the methods as, if you will, generic as possible but I do it in my own particular approach. What I disliked about a lot of introduction to qualitative methods uh, textbooks is that they focus so much at the beginning on um, the philosophy, the paradigms, the methodologies, and data analysis kind of got short shrift towards the end. Well, I flipped the curriculum around in my uh, fundamentals course, I teach methods of collecting data first, because I feel that that is the craft of what we do. Again, that's my theater training coming true. We learn to, we learn to be craftspeople first before we become artisans. And so I teach at the very beginning how to generate the data, how to manage it, the different ways that you can generate data. And then we go into uh, a large part about research design. Now that we have the tools available, how do we put those in a way of uh, asking a particular research question? Where What are the methodologies available to us in qualitative inquiry? And then we go into a full day of qualitative data analysis, because I feel that that's the most uh, elusive part about qualitative inquiry, uh, because we're dealing here with words and images rather than numbers. And because qualitative inquiry is so beautifully open-ended, I try to find ways to help my participants learn that there are several ways that you can approach the analysis of qualitative data. So it is a true overview of the field. One of the things we think a lot about, Johnny, for folks who are taking courses this summer intensive is what happens after they learn from you? And we were hoping you could let us know if you envision, let's say somebody starts back at work on a Monday after the summer intensive, what do you see them doing when they're back at their desk working through another aspect? And I'll let you begin either way is in what ways does the content you present in the fundamentals course offer ways for us to think about the field of qualitative inquiry and directions of that? So whichever angle you want, individuals working on their own or thinking about how the content influences um, what we're doing as qualitative inquiry experts in the field. I acknowledge that a lot of people who attend the workshops tend to come in with a very strong quantitative research background. And so because of that, I try to explain to them what the parallels are and what the differences are between quantitative and qualitative inquiry. And I hope that after the workshop, they go back to their desks, to their projects, and they think about different ways that they could be examining their data. So that rather than just simply seeing uh, their results in the forms of statistics, they're now thinking about how they can present their results 
in categories, in themes, as narratives, as stories. So that what I'm trying to do is to help them understand how there are different ways of representing and presenting research. So that's my primary goal is to offer them different ways of thinking about data. And I love that difference between, um, you know, the representing piece, all of those kinds of things. I just want to give an opportunity before we move on to the next part um, for Paul or Jeff, anything that you're thinking about that you want to raise in conversation with Johnny? Well, I guess I, I'm kind of curious, Johnny, how, how you feel about um, uh, art and science and how quality research is sort of um, kind of, um, uh, you know, a, a blending of those. Yeah, it's really interesting because we usually assign the science part to mm -hmm. quantitative research, right? Because we're dealing with numbers and numbers have a reputation of rigor and credibility. And there are some perceptions that qualitative research is primarily more humanities-based or arts-based rather than rigorous or scientific. And of course, I tried to dispel that uh, stereotype and that myth by talking about how very difficult it is to think about how we try to synthesize non-numeric data so that we're looking for commonalities, we're looking for patterns, we're looking for thematic insights. In fact, we're going for higher level understanding. And so for me, qualitative inquiry is both art and science because uh, Michael Agar, who was uh, uh, an ethnographer, said that what you need is a little bit of data and a lot of right brain, mm -hmm. meaning that what you needed to have was that creative capacity to be able to take a look at data and find new and insightful ways of coming to social understanding. Thank you. Thanks for reminding us of the wonderful contributions of Michael Agar. Uh, yeah. And you know, part of that conversation you just had with Paul, um, touches a little bit on the way you present your information for folks and kind of linking to the field of qualitative inquiry. Um, Jeff, anything you're thinking before we close out that conversation about the fundamentals of qualitative research course? Yeah, just uh, it, it's kind of uh, following up on what we were just talking about. But uh, Johnny, in your description for the course, you talk about uh, how it will be uh, beneficial for more experienced researchers to kind of see how you approach uh, the introductory uh, material. So I was wondering if you could just kind of expand on that a little bit, because uh, I find that to be an interesting uh, aspect to the course. So it's not just learning uh, how to or learning about the topic, but also in a way uh, teaching people how to teach. <laughs> yeah. One of my job responsibilities at ASU was as a teaching methods instructor, so that I was working with people who were going to be future teachers, kindergarten through 12th grade, on how to, you know, design curriculum, on how to prepare a lesson plan and all of that. So I come to my instruction with that knowledge, because I taught how to teach, I apply those same principles in my own work. When People enroll in my courses, uh, several of them are uh, university instructors or uh, research primary investigators. And what they do is uh, it, let me know in the evaluations how my pedagogy was kind of very useful for them because I presented different ways, again, from my theater perspective, presenting material in ways that are more participatory in ways that are very visual oriented so that this way what I'm doing is I'm trying to make the learning as active as possible. We're not just all sitting around at our tables. We're conversing with each other. We're dialoguing with each other. We are diagramming. We are working collaboratively so that there is as much on your feet activity designed in the course as possible. And what I hope that instructors will do is see different ways that you can approach the teaching of qualitative research methods and apply those same principles to their own classrooms. Yeah, That's Jeff, great. That's great. Yeah. Thank, thank you so much, Jeff, for directing us to that topic and Johnny for giving that information. I don't think it's just for me, but as we 
um, serve as administrator of your courses um, over the years. We've learned qualitative, but I can't say how much you've taught me about different ways to present qualitative inquiry. And we've gotten lots of feedback from our participants about how it does. Absolutely. It influences the way that they present their work too. So it's far beyond content. It's a wonderful experience for anyone thinking about taking your courses.